All right, last night, pretty cool blog post came up from the devs announcing stuff to do with PvP Season 13 and the next Elite Specialization revamp. And in a weird way, it's on an expected class, that being the Revenant. And in another way, it's on a very unexpected aspect of that class. They've picked Herald. So I know there's been a lot of the LP lately, so let's keep in the loop and talk a little bit about some of the other stuff going on. <laughs> Right, so yes, uh, last night, that being August 21st, the devs did drop a bit of precursor information regarding an upcoming balance update. The prior one, of course, quickly moving further off into the past. And yes, another big specialization revamp is on its way. For those of you out of the loop, the past few months, the devs have been doing this. They've been taking big aspects of the game and gutting and redefining them. Mesmer in general had a huge change to do with its phantasms and shatter interactions. We just had a big dead eye update and now they're talking about a herald one which is really kind of cool because those updates for better or worse have shaken things up a lot we saw the mesmer ended up very overpowered we saw that the dead eye felt kind of underpowered and is now actually on another iteration even beyond that so the question is how well designed will the next one be but really the big ticket item here that i want to talk about is that it's not renegade that's what many of us were thinking about. Renegade being the elite specialization for this expansion, Path of Fire. Renegade not being too well designed. And when I say that, I don't mean in terms of efficacy and specific raid encounters or how it performs in competitive PvP and world versus world. I mean, the specialization is generally regarded as a bit of a mess. Visually, a bit of a mess. Trait wise, a bit of a mess. Weapon skills, a bit clunky and a bit of a mess. So it's been no surprise to me in the recent balance updates that they hadn't touched Renegade much as it really seemed like the next big one that was going to have a rework and lo and behold here we have Herald instead. Amazing. And why I kind of wonder because Herald in many ways was pretty decent at its job specifically when you looked at some of the more competitive formats and had been getting hammered in good direction over the past I don't know year or so I'd say. Well maybe it is all still tied together. Never fear renegade lovers who have been looking for a change. My work in theory now is that possibly while the devs were looking at what they wanted to do with Carla. They realized there was going to be overlap and oddness related to Herald and that Herald might be a little bit ill-defined for itself. So they've tried to retool this one first, which would be lower on the tree. Nothing they say in the blog post, we'll get to in a second, really links towards that. But I think that that might be what's going on. Uh, so yeah, let's jump in just before we discuss the bulk of today's video, which is going to be on these updates and what the devs have said, which I'll remark as well. I don't have entirely positive opinions on. Uh, they do also talk about this PvP League Season 13. Uh, I played a lot from Season 9 through 12. I'm just getting back out of PvP a bit at the moment. But here's the big change. Those who have been following the forums a lot will know about this already. Duo Q returns. The devs say this, that 30, Season 13 begins on the 28th. Duo Q will return for all ranks and the leaderboard titles will be retired along with this balance update. So uh, let's unpack this. First of all, Duo Q coming back. This is going to be a big moment. Some of the earlier seasons had Duo Q. Many of the more dedicated PvPers have been asking for Duo Q to come back for a while now. It was kind of posed as a bit of an experiment going solo over only for as long as we have now. Uh, I'm fairly cynical myself that bringing Duo back will revive the scene massively. I know people have a lot more fun uh, when they have more control over the game because they can play in duos but uh, we have also heard numerous stats in the past from the devs at how bad matchmaking gets when they're juggling with the duos the individual solos in there might make it kind of difficult we'll see it could be enough to get me back to season 13 and I'll just play a lot of it with a partner but time will tell. Certainly, the current infrastructure with Solo only hasn't been perfectly satisfying everyone. So it's nice to see the devs have listened to that push for bringing Duo back. And I hope we're just not going in circles, basically, where we're Duo for a while and then everyone hates it and wants Solo again. And then everyone hates it and wants Duo again. Will this be the next main iteration to stick? I guess time will tell. The other side being the leaderboard titles getting revoked. That might seem kind of weird to you guys. And you might not like it, but I'm actually in favor of this one almost fully. If you have a look in your achievements down at the competitive section and just go to your general PvP area, you will see there are a lot of titles for getting very high on the leaderboard. God of PvP, Relentless Legend Unyielding, several of these I still don't have. I was extremely close to Relentless one season, never quite nailed it. Uh, these will no longer be available to players. 
And you might think that's a bit of a shame, particularly if you haven't played in the first 13 seasons. You've now lost out on this forever. But I'll note a few points in favor of this idea. Number one, Guild Wars 2 is no stranger to this. There's an enormous number of historical achievements. It's kind of ingrained in the game's DNA right now. But the other side is many of these titles were kind of RNG fests anyway. The real state of leaderboard progression and trying to snag those stop spots in PvP uh, involved a heavy, heavy amount of dice rolling. One loss you could lose so much rating so quickly you'd be completely out of the top 30 when a mere Q or two ago you were jostling for first to third. Uh, then all the people popping up on the leaderboard right in the last moments to try and snag the spots. It wasn't really that healthy. I'd also suggest that titles really in Guild Wars 2 today with so many of them I don't think people look at that much. Uh, Reddit has been very keen to go on and on about the win trading and win selling and stuff, which I personally don't think was as big of a pox on the PvP side of the game as your random casuals will suggest it was. But, I mean, that's another side too. You might not have ever respected Relentless Legend anyway because you assume everybody's just buying their way to it. Getting rid of this might iron out the flow a bit, and I really don't think we'll burn any super dedicated players and people in that matchmaking pool just because those titles are gone. Uh, hopefully the devs give us other rewards and other incentives for doing well and uh, build that population up a little bit more with the addition of Geo Q. So there you go, that's my thoughts. I probably would have had a lot more profound ones had I still been PvPing a ton over the past month or so. But as I said, I've just started getting burnt out of it, just started moving away. And if anything, I'll just be happy that these empty boxes will no longer be here to taunt me. And my final real thing will be Champion Brawler and Conqueror here, my big 10,000. We'll see. Alright, so really that thing about PvP is more of a tack on. Let's talk about Rev and see exactly what the devs have to say. Straight away with a screenshot here featuring a Herald underwater. We can tell it's a Herald because those icons you see on screen are the various facets. And yes, uh, this is described at the very end of the post in a single sentence, very cheeky arena net. They know people would love this. They say this. Also, you can now channel Glint underwater. Brilliant. That's what a lot of the excitement seems to have been on the community end about. Now, I don't really play enough Revenant to truly care about this fact. I feel plenty excited with the double weapons we've now got as of recent underwater balance. Uh, but yes, it's true. As the game currently stands, you cannot use the dragon stance when you're down here. The uh, slots aren't actually enabled. The only thing available is your profession mechanic, the F2. Uh, and you might wonder why is that? You know, it's a long time since Heart of Thorns is released now. What is it that's so special and crazy about these skills that mechanically means they can't work? Work underwater. What is it? The single elemental blast here because it's ground target. Everything else should work fine, you know, pulsing AoEs, direct targeted skills. But even that's not a good excuse. We've had countless examples now of ground targeted abilities above ground that become directly targeted underground, underwater. Just like, for example, I think Mesmer Feedback ended up getting that treatment, right? Uh, and, you know, especially what we saw they did with Jarless underwater in recent updates with the road, uh, it just doesn't make much sense to me. I did have a theory that it was maybe to do with art, and I know that sounds fiddly, but perhaps the uh, art plastered on the ground, which is very cool as you light things up the various panels up here. Maybe this would look weird underwater because it can be so far under your feet. Uh, but then again, you get the F2 underwater anyway, which already has that weird art aspect to it. Uh, maybe it was the art after all. If you look at the screenshot here, the devs have shown they've moved it around. It's now above our shoulders. Presumably even the F2 will get that treatment too. But uh, yeah, I, I really don't understand. It's taken them a while, but it's good to see they are still looking at underwater stuff. I applauded the Deadeye update for continuing to look at underwater stuff, even after that patch came through, based on community response. And I'll applaud this one too, when the Rev got it at the same time. If it means more fancy things like our underwater ring road, I'm more than happy. Okay, so yes, that's the underwater aspect. Now let's get into the really juicy bit. And where I'm questioning the devs a bit, stick with me. It's not all doom and gloom. Let's just see what they have to say. First of all, Revenants were introduced with Guild Wars 2 Heart of Thorns to aid in the skirmishes and battles against the Elder Dragon Morgamoth. They brought their ability to invoke the power of the legendary dragon Glint to the fray. With the next balance update, we're making a bunch of changes to the specialization line to bring Herald up to date. Glint undoubtedly foresaw this. Uh, yeah, they can't resist. You'll notice the title of this post as well is about the Herald's near future. Glint having been pro prophetic, obviously. 
Uh, first, each of the existing facet skills has had its corresponding active skill labeled as a consume now. Uh, this is to help differentiate between the two and it allows for a bit more variation in some traits. So I don't really like the name consume, it's a bit too close to some of the other mechanics in the game. But yeah, right now, uh, you know, our burst here, but uh, elemental blast, that doesn't really describe in its name that it is a specific category of skill. Uh, I guess legendary dragon skills will be the channels and consumes on the other side. Uh, it's interesting to think that there are a lot of skills mechanically like this. They don't necessarily hook into energy management upkeep, but consumes out there now, and I wonder whether they'll be appropriately labeled. Could we get rune sets and things that augment consumes in the way that runes might augment glyphs and whatnot in the future? Uh, that's curious to me, and obviously remember, if they are developing another expansion right now with another nine specializations, some of the stuff they're doing here could be la laying groundwork for even that. Moving on, uh, because that's not too interesting, they say while Glint may have bided her time in the distant past, we wanted to push more impactful gameplay to this specialization and began with the F2 ability, the facet of nature. Previously, this facet would grant nearby allies an increase to their outgoing boon durations. Soon, it will instead grant allies prowess based on the legend that you invoke. Now, this is one of the big things. F2, I think we can all agree, isn't really that exciting. It's very potent, and in the past, it's been ridiculously potent. Having 500 concentrations splash out onto all the players around you is amazing, but it's really not that good. Cool. And especially in solo scenarios with some of the might stack capabilities with the combos of Invocation and Herald now, like for example, getting shared empowerment uh, and incense response while we're picking up the facet of darkness and whatnot. Uh, it kind of, the, the passive didn't feel very fun. And I understand that really this is one, supposed to be one of the biggest parts of the entire specialization. Herald was kind of funny in that it released right when Rev base class released. So we don't fully care that the Herald didn't reinvent the wheel enough, if you will, because it always felt like it was a part of the wheel that is Rev. Uh, so I get why they're doing this. I really do. And I've got no big problems there. The idea they have as well is pretty interesting. They say, for example, embodying King Jarlis Iron Hammer and then channeling your F2 will, instead of giving concentration, reduce the damage each of your allies receives. But if you're channeling the vicious nature of Shiro Tagachi, allies around you will steal health from enemies they strike. Should you decide to invoke a different legend while the facet is active, the boost you grant your allies will change with you, allowing you to adjust on the fly. So this is not a particularly bizarre or alien mechanic for Guild Wars 2. Uh, those elementalists listening to me right now will look at things like, hey, if we're water specialized and in water attunement, we regenerate the health of everyone around us. Similar situation here. Uh, I would note that what they're basically talking about is the theming of the invocation line. And this ties into what I was talking about a second ago. Every class is supposed to have kind of four distinct lines and then a fifth, and then the elite specializations afterwards. But because Rev got an elite spec at the same time as it got its fifth. You can see the lines blurred here. What they're talking about is super similar to Invocation's Song of the Mist, which gives you a different effect based on the character you invoke, or Invocation's Spirit Boon, which gives you a different boon based on the spirit that you invoke and gives it out to nearby allies too. I suppose you can make an argument for just the synergy between Herald and Invocation now. The question is, why is Herald suddenly supposed to be king deeply into Invocation? I mean, it already was because of the might on Fury, but hey, for maybe overlooked reasons. And in fact, that extremely potent combo might be one thing that they're trying to address with this update. I think a lot of people are overlooking. Uh, so anyway, uh, yes, they've described that. That's for passively, but then active as well is getting pretty interesting. Furthermore, the consume skill called True Nature... Uh, it's currently known as One with Nature, but it's now going to be called True Nature. That also changes with the legend you're channeling. Each legend's True Nature skill sticks with their theme, but it does so in a different fashion from the passive facet. Using the True Nature of the Legendary Dwarf will grant your nearby several stacks of stab, maintaining defense but against CCs instead of damage. For the Legendary Assassin, the F2 skill will strip nearby enemies of their boons, maintaining offensive and aggressive style. And like, I get that, 
I'm not sure it's really that exciting, and already it feels weird to me that they put Boon Rip on Shiro when Malik seems very heavy, and Corruption seems like the more heavily Boon Rip oriented aspect of the class. Seems like some crossed wires there straight away. But uh, yeah, I kind of get that now, and you get that balance just like you do with the other facets of you want to hold the passive as long as possible, but the active could be really useful too. Matters of efficacy, how many boons it strips, the cooldowns, all of that stuff, obviously pending. So that will be the spirit of the F2, and of course we could be, you know, uh, not using Dragon at all. The blog post doesn't talk about any of the other facets, except for the fact they'll be utilizable underwater. So whether Infuse Light will change a little bit, which is an extremely heavy part of why this is so effective or really competitive in, in the more competitive modes. Uh, whether we will be seeing the facet of Darkness not pulse so much Fury because of other synergies or any other changes too. Uh, the devs just haven't given us. I guess we're free to speculate. But they do go further and uh, talk a bit about traits. And here I scratch my head a little bit more. Maybe you guys can put me on the right path here. But here's what the devs say. In revamping the Herald's traits, we themed them more closely to the compassion of Glint, who sought to shield humanity from the Elder Dragons and sacrificed herself toward that end. This led us with three distinct themes. Assisting humanity unifying a group of champions and channeling her grit gift of prophecy this feels like a backwards justification to me basically what they're saying is we looked at the story and the flavor and now we're matching the mechanics to it afterwards and that's all well and good i know some of you guys might be cynical about that i actually think that's a good baseline way to build the specializations up but why those three things they feel so arbitrary I don't see Glint as someone who assisted humanity particularly more than many of the other races. At the end of the day, the events with Destiny's Edge was a multiracial group. She spent a ton of time with the Forgotten. It was the Brotherhood of the Dwarf. Uh, and are, do we still consider the Exalted at that point really humans? I suppose that doesn't matter too much unless they've got traits specifically referring to humans and things, which I doubt. Unifying a group of champions? I mean, you could put it that way, but Destiny's Edge was unified way before Glint came along. And uh, it was the events surrounding her that actually caused the fracturing of that group. Uh, and the only one I really agree with is, yeah, this idea of prophecy. That's very cool. And I like the idea, you know, Heart of Thorns added the chrono with this the kind of prophetic time travel-ish kind of stuff. It would be cool to see maybe Herald as a part of that same expansion dealing with those elements a bit better. Uh, so yeah, there's only one of those I really agree with. And then they say this after they've got those almost arbitrary ideas. These themes are going to be embodied in the specialization trait line through lending magical aid to allies with healing and boons, focusing on the facets of Glint and enhancing those powers of hers, turning inward and channeling, channeling potency to yourself. Turning inward and channeling potency to your... I mean... Guys, this is waffle to me. I don't know what they're really getting at here. I don't know how that then turns into ideas for skills and numbers. But I think essentially what it is they've been trying to do is justify making Herald a more group-oriented elite specialization. Now, I don't mean specifically support, though there will be supportive elements, but more group-oriented and it provides utility for teams uh, across the various game modes. And I think that they're trying to do that for several reasons. First of all, because that seemed to be more the MO of Herald way back in the early days. The idea of splashing out lots of boons, the idea of the nature of the shield, it did seem to be trying to slot a little bit into that place and then was overshadowed and kind of became a bit unwieldy over the years and ended up doing different things uh, because of how it keyed in with the rest of the game. So I think they're just trying to get it back to that very pure, clear idea of a group-oriented thing. Uh, and what that also then does, and why it might be on their mind now, is it gives them space to slot Renegade in smoothly as its distinct niche, and it gives them space to slot whatever they've got their third idea for as well with its niche. That's what I think the truth is, and they've just kind of added this extra layer of, oh, Glint was about compassion and healing. I don't think so, really. She was a big badass dragon that could have crushed our heads in her more, and was a master of lightning and storms and jagged crystalline materials. They easily could have made the Herald have nothing to do with group-oriented play, but hey, that's where they've gone. Uh, looking at specifics, here's what we get about the traits. Elevated compassion, 
Heal other allies when you grant them a boon. Uh, to which many guardians will probably be looking and either shaking or nodding their heads. Uh, helping allies in a two-for-one manner by granting health while powering them up. Uh, core va But they don't list whether that's Grandmaster or anything either, by the way. So its efficacy and stuff can change based on the tier they give it. Core value. This one's very exciting to me. Improve the active effect of your F2 true nature. So, they say here, this trait strengthens the effect of your F2 consume, making your choice of which legend to channel when activating that more meaningful. For example, using true nature as a shiro with the core value trait will strip a greater number of boons from your nearby enemies. Uh, and yeah, that could be really fun depending on what the actual F2 consumes really are. Some of you might be excited to think, oh, what about with Carla and Renegade? Remember, you can't have two elite specializations at once. Uh, but that sounds cool. That sounds very Grand Mastery to me, especially when paired with Invocation and some of those Grand Masters. And then uh, the final example here, Hardening Persistence has become gain damage reduction based on your active energy upkeep and your shield abilities now remove condies and they're saying this that the trait was previously adept it's now master its toughness has been replaced with a percentile damage reduction instead and we see a lot of that in more recent balance patches and we see that in rev in general i would say uh, when you look at some of the herald stuff and they say it now improves your shield so that they condi cleanse which is an aspect of rev i think it was looking for and uh, so, yeah, there you go. That's their changes to Herald. And uh, there's not much more to say, really. I am a little mixed on it, honestly. I do find the post they've given a little unconvincing. Uh, and given that the Deadeye one really didn't seem to be too great as it first released, I'm not sure where my confidence levels are. Uh, do you guys think I'm just being overly negative? I'd love to hear some counter examples and discussion from the real, real heavy rev players out there. I mean, I've got a lot of rev gameplay, but I don't main it. And so maybe some of you feel like you've got some worthwhile opinions. Uh, are you drop in the comments when the update actually comes through. I'll make sure to have what you guys have said in mind. That's about it, really. Uh, I will continue to keep you guys up to date with stuff. I'm mostly just looking forward to the fact we'll have more balance soon. And uh, yeah, hopefully season 13 goes well. There will be another video on this and a much more detailed, comprehensive one once the patch is actually out. So do keep that in mind. Hope to see you guys very soon. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you shortly.